On this episode of Info World News, Ms. Taylor Swift says she has no fear of leftist bullies. UK government warns people traveling to Sweden beware of gang crimes, e shootings, and etc. And Nikki Haley nukes the Grammys after Fire and Fury reading that and a lot more, so stay tuned. For the final week of January the 28th, 2017, this is the first article here. This is an article written by the Herald Sun. Sun, it, the title is called Taylor Swift Has No Fear of Bullies of the Left. Dispute on relenting pressure, Swift refusing to become an over political feminist pet who obediently regulates. We're going to take leftist talking points, and folks, I'm going to go into why I am unable to read this entire uh, article. The bullying of Taylor Swift for the courageous crime of not publicly supporting Hillary Clinton or denouncing Donald Trump has entered its third year. Despite unrelenting pressure, Swift refuses to become an overly political feminist who obediently regurgitates leftist talking points. For this sin, the singer-songwriter has <laughs> paid a heavy price. She has been labeled an aggressive white, linked to neo-Nazis, and accused of being a messenger for a disturbing new era. Last week, she criticized BuzzFeed for not taking part... I mean, she was criticized by BuzzFeed for not taking part in the second annual Women's March, aka the largest the world's largest post-election tantrum. Uh, another BuzzFeed hit piece blames Swift for having white supremacy fans and claims that she has intentionally linked to whiteness and privilege. <laughs> and the article's on here to say that basically after every a popless princess including Beyonce, Katy Perry, Lady Gaga, Ariana Grande, and Molly Cyrus, publicly backed Clinton during the election. Election presidential in New York City, the campaign, why was Taylor, why was Swift silent? And that's where it ends here. Folks, the reason why I can't read this is because basically, you know, I don't have the article, I'm not a member of it. But to fill the void, here's Al Jones to actually read the article for you and talk about it. Take it away, Mr. Jones. Uh, period. Out there. And, of course, everybody knows who I'm talking about. Uh, she won't get into all of this. She won't join uh, in to all of the endless hating and the rest of it. Taylor Swift. So, I was reading what the mainstream news and people say about her. She's aggressively white. She needs to apologize for the fact that she's even white. And because she won't attack the president, they're now trying to boycott her and shut down her shows when she's the highest grossing beyond the Beatles, beyond George Strait. First, George Strait broke the Beatles record, and now it's, now it's Taylor Swift. And she's number one. She's apolitical for people that want escapism. And because of that, there's a big move to try to shut her down because she's white. That is incredible racism on its face. And that story's up on Infowars.com. So that's who these bullies are. And it shows how anyone who wants entrance, even if they're very talented, into the system has to fly their flag as a leftist. That's called being in a cult. That's authoritarianism. And then if you become successful just being apolitical, they're like, hey, you better join us politically or we're going to call you aggressively white. And it's white people that are driving this. It's incredible. They're looking at demographics. They're, they're, they're racist white people who, who use race to control. A true racist isn't even believing it. They're just using it for balkanization and control issues. They then 
know that classical Americans are good people and aren't racist, so they can bully us, and they say, you will do what we say, you will pick up our political views, or we will attack you even if you don't say anything political. You are our slave. Taylor Swift has no fear of bullies on the left. It's out of the Herald Sun, the bullying of Taylor Swift for the egregious crime of not publicly supporting Hillary Clinton or denouncing Donald Trump has entered its third year. Despite unrelenting pressure, Swift refuses to become an overtly political feminist pet who obediently regurgitates lefty talking points. For this sin, the singer-songwriter has paid a heavy price. She's been labeled aggressively white, linked to neo-Nazis, and accused of being a messenger, these are quotes, for a disturbing new era. Last week, she was criticized by BuzzFeed, that's the PP gate people, the fake news kings, for not taking part in a second annual women's march, a.k.a. the world's longest post-election tantrum. Another BuzzFeed hit piece blamed Swift for having white supremacist fans and claimed that she is intrinsically likened to whiteness and privilege. And I'm going to stop there as they move forward with trying to shut her down. But don't worry, Katy Perry and Beyonce and Lady Gaga, they'll all play along. Miley Cyrus, while they degrade women and everybody else and cover up for Hollywood's incredible crimes. Then you watch these women's marches that love Hillary when she's the poster child of covering up men abusing women, raping women. And Sharon Stone is in the news saying, Harvey Weinstein, you know, you don't give somebody the death penalty for a parking ticket. That's a quote. Okay, thank you. You see, I mean, I may not like her because she drinks Diet Coke or whatever. I wish she would stop drinking Coke. Because that stuff will make you blind. And it has aspartame, which is actually bacteria feces. But technically speaking, I respect her for pretty much standing up to these bullies. Gotta, gotta give her credit. Gotta give her some props. Great job, girl. Please keep standing. On right to our second article here, and it's an article written by Virginia Haley, and it is from Breitbart, which is which Infowars.com happily linked. It's how it got no ghost zones. The UK government warns people traveling to Sweden beware gangs, crime, gang crime, shootings, and explosions. <clears throat> this is what happens when you the culture written from the religion of war. UK travel advised on Sweden has warned visitors to beware of violence, gun crime, and explosion in the nation. Since migrant dem dem dominated no go zones, crimes are low, and in the Narek Narek region, the governor advised note notes. But it goes on to caution: violent crime does occur. Instances of gang-related crime, including shootings and explosions, have been reported in Malio and Gothenburg. The travel advisor, which, which was updated earlier this month, marks increasing acknowledgement by the establishment of problems Sweden in ex ex experiencing as a result of the nation's humanity, humanitarian policies of importing large numbers of migrants from the third world, which are actually military-age men. They were, in 2006, an eight-year-old Birmingham schoolboy, Yusuf Warsham, was killed in a bomb last while on holiday in Sweden with his mother, brother, and sister. <laughs> there was, they were visiting relatives in Gottensburg when a grenade was thrown through a window of the apartment where he was sleeping in an attack which took place in the context of a continuing gangland feud between members of the city's Somali community. Underneath it, it uh, as the article, the article goes on to say that Swedish hospitals have also had been to deal with the problems caused by democratic changes stepping up by security in response to parents, family, and friends members turning members turning up to wars wearing bulletproof vests and carrying knives. I mean, really, folks, is there more 
I don't even know what. I don't even know why I'm saying this. Islam is not a religion of peace. It is a religion of war, and they know it. They're trying to stop people from doing, from 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 actually saying this stuff, and that's just it. I mean, when you're letting people, uh, when letting people that are incompatible with their own culture, they're gonna start doing stuff like raping your women and basically all types of other crazy stuff. And people have been trying to tell, tell, trying to tell people about, about why Muslims been doing this, doing this, like Tommy Robinson and his book, Muhammad's Quran, Why Is Muslims Kill for Islam? Which I'm gonna read more of it, if my parents didn't take, take my book, book during the State of the Union address, they yeah, actually thought I was gonna turn into a Muslim because I was reading that thing. Anyway, this is the last one of the end, it's also written by... By Ford Springer. The title is called Nikki Haley Nukes the Grammys After Firing Beauty Ring, which was also linked by Infowars.com. Nikki Haley reaction like most Americans probably did did when most poxes came up during the Grammys broadcast on Saturday on Sunday night. At one point during the biggest night in music, CBS aired a free tape bit in which several celebrities, including former President Hillary Clinton, read, read excerpts from Michael Wolff's book, Fire and Fury. And it didn't actually sit well with the United States Ambassador of the United Nations. And you can see her tweet here. I've always loved the Grammys, but to have artists read Fire and Fury book killed it, Haley wrote on Twitter. Don't ruin great music with trash. Some of us love music without the positive thrown in it. Unfortunately, stunts like, like, stunts like they pull during Sunday's night's Grammys have become the standard in awkward till these days. Earlier, earlier in the evening, the Daily Show host Trevor Noah joked about performing performance that took place way back, as in. When the Trump wasn't president, if only music could could take us back to politics weren't discussed at all during awkward shows. Now that would be interesting. Yes, it would, it would be interesting, Mr. Pre but guess what? They don't care. They're gonna keep doing it until they're completely, well, crackless. But here's Alex Jones about that. And meanwhile, though, people are really getting sick of Hillary Clinton. And I want to play this next clip, the full clip, just to give you the cringe worthiness uh, of the Grammys last night that had the lowest amount of viewers ever recorded. Grammy ratings fall. And then it goes on to break down that it's basically a crash and burn, just like the NFL, just like Hollywood movie sales. People are sick of being beaten over the head. I personally want to go see a movie that's not political. I personally want to watch a ball game sometimes, but I can't do it because it's so political. Liberal or conservative, beating you over the head, beating you over the head, beating you over the head. The ads are propaganda. The statements are propaganda. And then you've got Hillary with this fiction book. It's kind of like a historical novel. You know, it, it's posing as nonfiction, but it is fiction, but it mixes some truth in. It's been totally discredited. I don't have to go back over that can of worms, that kettle of fish, that uh, that mess uh, that is Mr. Hare Wolf's book. Uh okay, thank you, Mr. Jones. You see, nobody wants to see your politics in anything. That's why people are stopping watching watching the Grammys. That's why they stop watching the NBA, and most important, that's why they started the boycott the Super Bowl. And as this is being recorded, the Grammys have come and gone. So technically speaking, they got the lowest ratings ever. And the Super Bowl is also going to have low ratings too. If they kneel, of course. <laughs> they don't realize they just turn this. But anyway, folks. Also, folks, there was also another arc I wasn't able to get to. The title was actually called the let's see what it's called. Oh, yes. U.S. Ambassador called out NBC for falling for fake news from North Korea. Now, I've already done my tidbit on this 
on this uh, episode here. On the on, on the article, and basically, it's kind of quite funny, if you so so if you if you say so myself. So please go check that out. Well, that's all the articles I have for you today. If you'd like to be more more about these articles, please go link below or go to infowars.com or prisonsman.com. There you can find hundreds of articles like this one I have read for you today. This is the Infowar Newsbits. I'm Infogato. I'm from 3 number 3. Please like, subscribe, and donate. Bye-bye.